I definitely want more kids. I don't have a boy, I have all girls. I'm not meant to be a girl mom. What's up guys, I'm Miss Erica Dixon and I am the mother of two beautiful baby girls, Embry and Eris, who are twins at 17 months. And I have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful older baby girl, Imani, who is 15. I'm not sure how tall they are, but the girls weigh, oof, Embry, she's a little on the heavier side. Embry's about 20 pounds and Eris is about 17 pounds. So Embry's nickname is Breezy, Bree Bree, Juice, Mom. <laughs> And Eris' nickname is, well, she has a few too. We call her Ree and Ari. Now, I do remember when they started walking. So, Embry started walking August 21st, and Eris just started walking October the 5th. The girls don't have a twin talk yet, but what I've noticed is Eris laughs at everything that Embry does, and she just cracks. It just, it's so hilarious to her. She cracks up, and I'm just like, what did she do that was so funny? And then they do this thing where, if they're sitting next to each other, Eris might look at her and just get this close to her face. And then Embry might randomly do it. And then she just gets that close to her face and then just go about their business. So I don't know if that's a signal or I don't know what it is, but they randomly do it. And I just think it's so cute. Embry talks. She will repeat what I say. Eris does not speak yet. She just makes sounds and she growls. And that comes from her looking at uh, her shows on TV. But Embry will say mommy. Embry will say daddy. She will say ee -E, and she will say ie. Say mama. I said mama. The twins don't have all their teeth. I'm gonna say the girls, so let me say this. My thing is, I didn't want to make them like one, so I didn't want to call them the twins. So I just say the girls, and I don't allow people to call them like twin, and twin, like call them by their names. And if you don't know who's who, just ask me and I'll tell you. <laughs> but I'm gonna refer to them as the girls. So the girls do have eight teeth. They have four at the top and four at the bottom. The same exact four. Their teeth came in the exact same way, like back to back. It was crazy. Twins do run in my family. We were due for some. The last twins on my mom's side was my great aunt. And on my dad's side are my twin. They're fraternal though. On my mom's side, they are identical uh, women. They're grown to, they're like 27. So we were due for some. I just never thought it would be me. So for those that don't know, I was raised in New York uh, for about eight or nine years by my aunt. The aunt that I was raised by is one of the identical twins, which is my grandmother's sister. So the fact that I had twins, she was just like ecstatic. She was overjoyed. And I do call her mom too. So I'm like, mom, heaven, you know, identical girl. She's like, oh my gosh, wow. So she's older now. She's um, almost 80. So she hasn't been able to come down here and see them yet, but she's gonna eventually make a trip down here and uh, see them. It's definitely harder. Um, it's a lot. I think it takes a special somebody to be even given twins. And they say, I mean, God gives his hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. So I have to say, I wasn't prepared for this because like I said, the money was easy, like real easy, even you know, from a baby to a toddler. And not that the twins are difficult, it's just like in my mind, okay, one down, and I'm always saying it's one down, one to go. One down, one to go. Okay, she's good, let me go get the other one. Okay, one bag is packed, I got one to go. Okay, then the diaper bag. Okay, do I have the playpen? Okay, do I have food? I got food for Embry, do I have enough for Eris? Because Embry eats more than Eris. So it's just my mind, I feel like my mind is constantly racing. Eris, leave my computer alone. Eris is my different child, okay? She tries me every day. It, it feels like, you know, every day, just like on the hour, she just <laughs> does something. And maybe it's the middle child syndrome, I don't know, but she's the oldest twin and she's forever doing something. I have no door stoppers. She knows how to remove the, the things that go in the cabinet. She knows how to take those off. I just, I think she's been here before. So I really, really have to watch her. And she's very strong. I have a mannequin that's on like a piece of glass in my store and she knocked it over. The entire mannequin on the glass. So yeah, I just gotta watch her. Embry's the laid back, real, real passive. Um, I have to watch her uh, cause Eris does little stuff to her. She takes things from her and she'll watch her cry. 
so she's just real laid back. She's extremely nice. Like she still smiles and laughs, even when her sister's mean to her. Takes a toy, she'll go from crying to just smiling and go right back to, you know, playing with her. They have two totally different personalities. So they like pretty much, they're vegan. So right now, the girl's favorite food is oatmeal. So they think they're supposed to eat oatmeal just like all day. And you know, I test different things. I make different things for them to try to see if they like it. And honestly, if they won't eat it and they give me a hard time, they win. Oatmeal it is. I'm well stocked on oatmeal. I tried to breastfeed when I first had them but I didn't produce enough for both of them. Embry has always ate a lot since she came out. So it just, it wasn't enough. And eventually it just dried up. So they did plant-based milk. I have a picture where I'm holding both of them once they came home and I'm breastfeeding both of them. And it's, yeah, it was hard. Okay, so the childbirth was pretty much the same. I'm gonna say the pregnancy. The pregnancy with the money was, the beginning, we had a scare, you know. We, I, I lost a baby prior to Imani. I had a, a ectopic um, pregnancy, so they thought I had another one, but God's will, she's here. So the beginning, scary, but after that, like after she was good, we were in the clear breeze. The twins, on the other hand, first of all, they were monodi twins, so they shared a placenta and a sac. So Embry always took more from Eris. Eventually they thought Eris was going to die. It's called twin to twin transfusion. They thought, hey, you gonna come in one day? Just, you know, setting me up, preparing me. Hey, you may come in one day and we do an ultrasound and we won't see, you know, Eris. And we just let you know if that happens, that just means that Embry's, you know, getting everything from the placenta and it basically, you know, took her out. So I'm like, okay. So from having a mentally in my mind, you know, every time I go, like, it's a possibility that I may not see one of them. And it's like, we already prepared, you know, prepared you for this. Well, really errors, because Embry's always been the biggest. So just dealing with that, having to go to see a specialist, I think it went from one time a week to three times a week. So I felt like I was constantly getting up, like, oh, I gotta get it. And it was always early mornings for me. In the beginning, just, I couldn't find a doctor that would let me deliver vaginally because of the type of twins that they were. So I personally did my research and found my OB that delivered me money. And he seasoned and he saw me, kept a close eye on me. He gave me his cell phone number in case anything goes on. And he just said, you know, hey, I'm comfortable letting you try to deliver vaginally, but you have to get an epidural. So I was trying to go all natural. I almost did it with Imani, but my blood pressure just went way too high. So I wanted to try again with the twins, but I had to get an epidural. So that delivery was, I mean, everybody was shocked. I went in at night about seven, eight o'clock. I got induced that the next morning at 7 a.m. I pushed them out at 12:36 and 12:42. So it was it was it was easy. It was quick. It was a very speedy delivery. I was even shocked. I was like, "Wait, that's it? Okay, they're here. Okay." I didn't feel any pressure for a snapback because of social media. I felt pressure for a snapback because after I had money to a week later, sis was good. A week after the twins, I was like, what is this? Uh-uh, like what's, hold up. And they were like, just give it some time. I was asking the doctor. I'm like, you sure you push the placenta like all the way out? Cause this is still here. Like, ma'am, listen, you're, you're not in your twenties anymore. And you just had twins. It wasn't one baby, it was twins. I was like, you know what? You're right. You're absolutely right. And then I just got back in the gym and just went hard. Sometimes I dress the twins alike and sometimes I just dress them totally different. It just all depends on how I feel that day. Now, when they get about three or four and you just kind of see they're dressing all over the place, that's because they dress themselves and I'm clearly gonna let them do it. Money used to wear cowboy boots with everything. And then at one point she used to wear like her robe, her door robe. 
hey, let her be great. This is just how she felt today. They're next. The girls are really good when I do their hair. Now, when I first start, I wasn't doing hair at first. I just kind of let it stay out in a little curly fro. But I was like, you know what? I eventually have to start doing their hair because I wanted boys because I didn't want to do no more hair. But being that, you know, God saw fit differently, I have girls. So I do pretty much the same hairstyles and I get them. If they give me a hard time, I just sit them in a chair. They're not going to move in a chair. And I know that. I'm like, they're going to be good in a chair. Just sit them in a chair. Let me give you a couple ponytails. You can be on your way. So they're really good with their hair now. Now that I've been consistent with doing it, they're okay with me doing it. Imani is most certainly a second mom. Now, at first, I was a little worried because she was no help. And when I say no, none, Imani, you look, see, and she's gone by her business. Like, it ain't nothing going on. I'm like, you do have, you know, sisters. So eventually, she just, she came around. I think Imani dealt with, it just had been us for so long. And her having to accept and be able to adjust, like, it's not just me and my mom. And she said, like, I just don't have my mom to myself anymore. And at first, I'm like, girl, you a teenager, stop it. But I had to just stop and think about it. Like, it's been us for so long. So I just had to understand, like, she's used to us. And now that the twins had come along, it was like, now, really, a lot of my focus was on them, even, you know, after they came home. So eventually she just kind of came in and she wanted to learn how to change them. And then she wanted to learn how to bathe them. So I started doing those things with her because she hadn't, you know, done that ever before. So now that's, yeah, that's definitely second mama bear. Oh, Embry's wet. Oh, air is boo boo. Or sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night. Let me stop. I wake up dang it every night in the middle of the night and I go check on all of them. It's just something that I do. I think my body's conditioned at this point, but sometimes you might have Embry in the bed with her. Sometimes she might have Eris in the bed with her. And in the morning she'll say, well, you didn't, you know, you didn't hear her. She was whining and whining's not going to get me up. I have to hear like a cry. Then I'm going to get up and you know, I'm going to rock you back to sleep, but she'll have them. She'll go get them before I will. And she swear, that she they mama too, yes. She tells me that she's gonna take care of them. I'm like, what am I here for then? School, mm. it's a whole nother topic in itself. So school with Imani, she's 15, she's in the 10th grade. It's been years since I've been in the 10th grade, but this whole virtual learning, I can't wait till they get everything back together so they can actually go to school because honestly, it's nothing. I can help her with, she takes geometry now. I can't help you with geometry, I don't even remember. Like, no, slopes and uh-uh. I, no, I don't remember any of that stuff. Imani is a great student. Uh, she's, all her grades are good. She's an AB student. She doesn't have a favorite subject. She says she hates school. I believe her. Her grades used to reflect it, but she knows now she's held to a different standard. But overall, she's a good kid. She listens, she does her work, and that's all that matters right now. I've had several conversations with Imani about driving. I did a video on uh, Instagram, I let her drive. She's not bad, she's okay. She still needs a lot of work, but she's not bad. Dating, um, she's talking to a young man now that I'm okay with so far. But she's 15, so she's training lightly. Okay, so college. So she went through this whole phase where she was just like, oh, I'm not going to college. I hate school anyway, whatever. I personally was just telling her, you have to live for you. I think you should experience it. Cause I was deterred by, you know, my family. I got accepted to ASU and everybody just, you know, you're leaving us. It just made me feel so bad that I didn't even go. And I didn't want to do that, you know, to her. And I didn't want her to feel like she had to make a decision based on how anybody in the family felt. So I just let her know you have that option. I'm not going to force you to go, but you have that option to go. But if you want to, if you want to work, if you want to start your own business, which she does, she wants to start a beauty essential line. So that's what I've been working on with her because I told her, this go around, I'm not doing all the work for you. You just see me work, you see me grind, you just think, you can give me something else to do. Okay, mom, can you do this for me? 
Mm -mm, I had to let her know I'm not your assistant. You're gonna do this. You gotta work for it. You gotta show me you really want it. Motherhood has taught me to be patient, to take my time, and most of all, to put myself first. Because if I'm okay, then my kids are okay. It's your girl Brooke Valentine. Y'all remember me from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Don't forget to subscribe to VH1 YouTube channel so you can see more videos just like this.